So welcome to this tutorial on creating uh, color grading for your images. So we're going to do a few different things with this image today. First of all, I'm going to make a selection of this person in the foreground. We're actually going to remove this background, but we're still going to use the background, but we're actually going to completely blur it out so it looks like a blank uh, canvas for us, and then add a little color grading. Now this image already has been color corrected. Uh, it's normally normally not essential, but important that you color correct your images before color grading them, that you're starting off at, you know, a neutral kind of point, so that when you're adding colors, the colors that you want to add, that you get an expected result. Uh, if you're adding to an image with a, with a strong color cast on it already, then you may get unexpected results from your color grading. So. Let's start off by making our selection. So we're going to start by isolating this figure in the foreground using the very good and efficient tools now available in Photoshop. So I can just simply, if I just move my mouse over this, you can see it already does a pretty good job of making the selection. So I'll just move my mouse over this with my uh, object selection tool enabled and click once. And then I'm just going to wait now and uh, it should take a moment. Yeah, it's already there. So we've already got our selection available to us. We can take a look underneath select mask to see how that selection is. So I can use uh, my view here. I have it on black. So I want it on pure black to see what the edge is like. Uh, I've got a bit of light here. Uh, if I zoom control one or command uh, one to see what that looks like, that could be a bit problematic edges are a bit jagged uh, so what what we can do is, is just smooth out our edges a little bit so if we look here that's much better uh, we still have this issue here so maybe we can do with the edge detection for instance we can move that so maybe two pixels to see if it makes it any better just make sure that it's not affecting my image uh, drastically uh, in other places. It looks okay there. Uh, this is still a bit problematic. Let's add a little bit of feathering. Sometimes this can help. So 0.5. And of course, we, we can shift the edge in words a little bit to see if it helps with the problem. So I'm shifting it in about 30%. Uh, and let me just get rid of my feathering completely. I don't think I actually need it because it didn't uh, help. Yeah, that looks pretty all right, I think. This is looking fine. Control zero to zoom back out and I can click on OK. So now I have my, I'm just going to click off my uh, object selection tool. So now I have my, my object selected. So I want to create a new layer with just this person separated. So I can do shift control J. So shift control J creates a new layer from the area I have selected. So now you can see I have this layer one, which is the person in the foreground and behind that, we have this cut out here. Okay, so our next step is, is that we want to add a Gaussian blur to this background layer. So I go to filter, convert to smart filters. Then I'm going to go to filter and blur, Gaussian blur. And I already have it typed in here, it's, this is 1000. So I'm going to use that value, click on OK. And now we have our background uh, blurred out. But the most important thing is, is that we don't have to worry about creating a new background from a gradient or something else and color matching it with the light in our foreground. This already gives us a uh, color that's close uh, to or the same as the original image because we're using the actual background that was there that was that was used at the time I made this photograph. So now we have our blank canvas background. I'm going to move up to this layer. We're going to introduce, there's a number of, of different ways we can color grade this. So we're going to look at those different ways. Uh, the first possibility we have is by using another image uh, and using that other image as a separate layer. 
So what we can do in order to achieve that is if I take this image and I blur it again, I'm going to, so I'm going to use my Gaussian blur 1000 and I'm going to use my move tool, click, drag, drop over the main image. And what I can do is, is I can also resize this. So if I zoom out from this, control T to resize it, hold down shift because we don't really care about the proportions for this because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're just using it as a, as a color. So I accept that clicking the tick mark and then I'm going to use my overlay or you can try soft light depending on which you find looks good. I'm going to use overlay because that gives a good basis at least. So control zero, I'm going to zoom back in again. Uh, so now what I can do is, is I can first of all use my blending options. So come here for layer two, which is this color grade layer overlay is set and I can also use my blend if for instance for the underlying layer. So if I do this you can see yeah I can I can start moving the color out of the shadows if I want to a little bit or just to get it to blend better with the natural shadows that are there. So by moving this little arrow here you can see the fall off is quite harsh. I can smooth that out by holding down my alt key or option key if you're using a Mac and just sliding this back and it makes the fall off a little more kind of graduated. Uh, I can also do this for my highlights if I wish to. So again, holding an alt or option for a Mac. Uh, and you can also slightly remove this from your highlights if you want to. So it's only affecting the shades in this area 100%. And then it's gradually falling off between this point, uh, this dark point and this point here to zero and the same for the highlights. So I click on OK. I can further reduce the effect if I want to by lowering the opacity here. So I'm going to lower it. Uh, let's type in about 70 and see how that is. So I can turn my layer on and off. And you can see I've got a nice kind of warm now color grade there. It's warmed up the background and it's warmed up the image itself. So that's how one way you can use the second image to to uh, color grade. So I'm going to, for the moment now, I'm just going to remove this layer and I'm going to look at a different way of doing this. So to do this, we're going to, I want both these layers selected and just do shift control alt E. That just combines the two layers together. So then I can come to my filter menu and I can go ahead and uh, to my, to my neural filters. So this is another possibility for using uh, using this this uh, this neural filter for color transfer. So underneath color, you've got harmonization is one option, but this for this one, we're going to use the color transfer. We've got uh, an image that's this one that's open in the background, the one we used. I've of course blurred it out, so this kind of helps how it's going to be the color is going to be harmonized with the other one. Uh, so we have a number of different options here then. So we have our color space can be lab or it can be RGB, uh, depending on how you prefer it. Uh, you can also do further experience uh, experiments. So first of all, you can choose preserve luminosity if you want. So if you don't want it to, to darken your original image, you can reduce the color strength if you feel it's a little bit too strong, we can also change our saturation. Uh, we can also change the hue as well. So this gives us other options. So we don't have to stick to the original images hue, but we can actually move it around to create other types of kind of casts uh, on it. And then you can also uh, decrease or, or increase uh, the brightness based on your, your own effects uh, or your own, uh, your own tastes. So we can either output that to a cur the current layer, we can output it to a new layer with a mask, we can output it to a smart filter, a new document. So I'm going to output it to a new layer, click on OK. So now we have it on a new layer. We can also change the behavior of this new layer. So we can also come to our blending options, if you wish to, you can change how this interacts with the layer below. 
again, I'm holding the Alt or Option for a Mac, just changing how those colors are blended together. And uh, you can also change your opacity to reduce it down. So again, if we turn this off and back on again, you can see we have this now color graded image. So this is another option for color grading. So again, now I'm going to go back to the point where I'm just going to delete this layer that was created by the neural filters. So I'm going to, to bin that. And from here now I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to convert for smart filters. And then I'm going to go to my camera raw filter, which is access to the camera raw interface for this image, which we have of course composited it because we're using two separate layers. And from here, you can also use your color grading. So you have color grading options here. You've got your midtones, we've got shadows, and we've got highlights. So for this, then we can uh, play with our midtones and we can get a color grade. If you want to control, for instance, only saturation, you can hold down the uh, shift key. So that will give that will lock it to the saturation that you're of the current color that you've chosen. If you want to lock it to the hue, which is choosing the type of color you want, you can hold down control or command on a, a Mac and you can just move it around for that particular saturation. You can move it around the different colors to see which one is kind of most satisfactory for, for what you're trying to do. You can also have control over the shadows. So again, if we click on our shadows, we can color grade for our shadows too. So for instance, if you want uh, slightly deeper, more reddish yellow for your shadows, and then also for your highlights, again, if you want some type of kind of lighter yellow, maybe more or less saturated, depending on what you're what you're trying to do. So you can lock in holding the shift key or saturation once you found the color. And then below that we have these blending options for, for blending it with the, with the image, the image's color. And you also have balance. So balance will kind of affect the strength of the colors. And once you're happy with your grade, again, you can click on OK. And we have this as uh, as a smart filter. So you can also, because we have layers below this, we can also reduce the strength of it in this case as well, if you wish to, uh, because we have layers working below this as well. Uh, you can also use, because you get a mask with your smart filter, you can also use your mask to mask it out of certain parts of the image uh, if, you, if you wish. So for instance, you could create a highlight mask or some other type of mask. Okay, so these are the three ways then where we explored possibilities for color grading your images. So the first one we looked at was combining this image, which we blurred and then overlapped on top of this with the overlay filter and blending options. The third option was using Photoshop's neural filters. And the second option, and the third, sorry, the third option was using uh, Camera Raw filter and the color grading options available through the camera raw interface to create a color grade. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And if you liked it, please remember to drop a like on the video. Uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to comment below. And again, thank you for watching.